Hello, my name's Stephen Knight. The purpose of this tutorial is to have a look at three methods of getting information to repeat in a live cycle designer form. So what we're looking at here is you want to type the information into a field and have that information repeat elsewhere on the form and on subsequent pages. It might be they type in an account number or a student number or an employee number or in this little case a last name. Now there are three methods. Method number one is we're going to use a global data binding method. We'll see what that means very shortly. Second method is we're going to use the action builder. And the third method is a little bit of point and click. So three different approaches that you can choose depending on the situation with your particular form. So this is method one. We're going to use the global data binding, but let's have a look at what we've got going on with our form at the moment. So what we have here first up is we've added a last name field. The binding in the object panel, the binding has been set to last name. So this is the name of the field is last name. Now, what we've done as well, if I go across into my master page, in what is effectively my header area here, I've added in another last name field. I've done a couple of things with it. I've uh, set up the caption just to repeat that. With the appearance, I've set it to none because we don't want it looking like a field. Uh, if I go to the value area, we could say, look, this is a uh, read-only field because people are not really going to be typing into this. And uh, so in the binding here, I've said last name. So I've repeated the name, spelt exactly the same as the binding of the original field. And what I've then done down here where it says data binding is I've said use global data. Now what this means is every field called last name will store the same information from that original field. So let's test this out. If I go to my preview and click in the field here and if I say my last name, I've got last name on the brain. If I say in my field my last name is Jones when I tab off that to move elsewhere, you'll see that it repeats in the box, in the field, in the header. So that's the end of method one, except I need to tell you a little bit of a snag with this. This method works really well if you're going to ask for a piece of information like last name once, and then you want to re-display it in headers and footers on subsequent pages elsewhere in the form. So as far as that goes, it's a good method. Where I would be wary of this method is with forms where you're using tables, where within the table a field is going to be repeated many times for data entry, not for display. In that situation, you don't really want to use this global method because the last name field might appear many times in the table and we want to have something different in every row in the table as you might be entering in next of kin or similar information. Okay, so here we are, step two, process number two rather. So here we are, method two. We're going to use the action builder this time. So our fields are pretty much as we had them before. Uh, our field in the design view is called last name this time. There's no global binding happening. If we go to our master page, we have a field here that is, uh, in fact, its binding is called, its field name is header name. So two different uh, field names in this case. If I go up to the Tools menu and go to Action Builder, I want to create a new action. So I just click the New Action button. I get to set my conditions. So I'm going to say when this last name field is, is changed. So if somebody changes it, that's going to be the trigger. The second part of it is then what do we want to do? I want to set the value of a field. 
Now I'm just going to relocate the dialog if it'll let me there and we're going to set the value of a field so just choosing set the value of a field and set the value of what field to what so I'm going to say look for this header name field even though we've formatted it so it doesn't look like a input box it is a text box a text field so we're going to set header name to the value of another field and that's to whatever the value is in last name so this is a little script that Lifecycle itself writes that says the last name field, when it's changed, these things will happen. Now let's test this out. If I go to preview my PDF, and again my last name is Jones, you'll notice uh, pretty much instantaneously it's transferring the information across for us. So very, very nice way of doing it and fairly easy to do there's a little bit of coding there but uh, life cycles doing all the hard work the key thing you need to remember with that method is to make sure you give your fields sensible names so that's method number two very quick look at method three this method again requires a little bit of coding the system's going to do most of the work if you've done my tutorial on adding cell values together you'll see this is a very similar process so where I'm at I'm on the master page I've got my last name field selected it's calculated read only in the value area okay so calculated read only because people are not going to type in here now, where I'm now going is Window Menu, Script Editor. I'm then going to the Design View. I'm clicking up here in the Script Editor. You've got to cut, change a couple of things. First up, we want to make sure that the Show is set to Calculate. The second thing we want to make sure is our language for this is Form Calc, and then that I've got the cursor in the Scripting window here. Now I'm going to hold down the control key, move my mouse pointer down over the last name field. Now you'll notice on the last name field my mouse pointer changes into a V. If I just click once then I can let my finger up off the control key. That's written a little bit of script there that is saying this one field is equal to what's in the other field. So where we're heading now, just to test that out, I'm going to go to my preview. If I click in the box here for last name, and if I put Jones in, now I need to tab because this is event driven. So I'm going to tab. When I tab, it says, right, that piece of information has been recalculated. This field up the top here is called Jones. Okay, it's using the same information, the value, from the uh, original field. So that's method number three. Uh, of the three methods, I'd go for uh, the first method, if you know that you're not going to be using that field name elsewhere in your form. Uh, the second method, using the action builder, if you're not comfortable with making sure you're clicking on the right thing in this third approach. So you've got uh, multiple ways of achieving the same result. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, my name is Stephen Knight. Bye for now. Hello, this is Stephen Knight. I hope you can use the material that you've just seen. I hope that we can help you solve a problem through it or that you are able to do something new that you haven't been able to do before. So where to from here? If you subscribe to my YouTube channel you will be advised of any updates, any additional video tutorials that I put up. Now, I don't get to see your email address out of that, so it's perfectly uh, confidential YouTube look after all of that. Uh, if you visit my blog, which is at trainascope.com, uh, you'll see the address in the last slide in a moment. Uh, then you'll find other information there, uh, again, uh, updates, but additional articles that aren't on the YouTube channel. Uh, also, I am available for training throughout Australia. 
if you'd like some training in the subject matter of this tutorial or other things, the Office Suite, SharePoint, Acrobat, Dreamweaver or Captivate, uh, please contact me through your firm's preferred uh, training provider. I work for all the leading training providers, uh, so please feel free to book me via your your HR department and their preferred training provider. Uh, also, uh, if you visit my blog, you'll also find a link to my LinkedIn profile. Uh, I'm always happy to get feedback from people through LinkedIn, so if you've got questions about the content, uh, things you want to ask me, uh, go, to my, go to my LinkedIn uh, profile and contact me through there. Just mention in the contact message what what the connection is that you've seen one of my training videos just so I know that who you are so uh, thank you for your time and I hope you've learned something from the content today